Namaste, welcome back to my channel Akshar Academy where you can learn a many commerce concepts in a very easy manner. I am Priya Gudsmakdi, your learning partner. Today I have come with a new concept, new subject that is GST, Goods and Service Tax. As per KUD, this is a subject for 5th semester students of BCom where you will be getting a practical problems on various aspects. So today I have come with the topic Aggregate Turnover. What do you mean by aggregate turnover? It is overall turnover of a company, overall sales of a company irrespective of taxable and non-taxable. Here, we consider all the sales, whether it may be taxable, non-taxable, exempted or nil rated. So, in today's class, I will be explaining some of the theory part relating to sums and directly will move on to the practical sums. So, this is a compulsory question for case study which we can expect. And if you have not yet subscribed my channel, you subscribe it now so that you will get a notification whenever I upload my new video. So let me share my screen first. Aggregate turnover, as we have discussed, it is a total aggregate value or total sales of a particular company. So let us see the meaning first. Aggregate turnover is defined as the aggregate value of all taxable and non-taxable supplies including exempt supplies and export of goods and services within the state and interstate. Here we consider taxable and non-taxable supplies as well as a service or supply of goods within the states or interstate and we also consider the sales from other countries also which we say it as a export so let us see what are items comes in the aggregate turnover so you can see in this chart so firstly we consider all taxable supplies so all the taxable supplies which are taxable under gst it may be cgst sgst igst or utgst all taxable supplies we are going to consider here Next one, we consider export of goods or services. So, whenever we sell the goods to another country, we consider it as a export. Next one is interstate supplies. So, uh, Karnataka is one state and Tamil Nadu is one state. When you sell the, sell the goods to Tamil Nadu, then it is considered as a interstate supply. So, this is one of the type of supply. So, other uh, on this, we have to pay IGST. On the exported goods also, we are going to... It is also considered as an interstate also. Next, non-taxable supplies. So, they comes under the bracket of GST, but we are not paying, they, they comes under a non-taxable. So, when we see the types of supplies, then these all are explained in the detail. So, we are going to consider non-taxable supplies also. Next, wholly exempted supplies. So, here we are going to consider all the goods which are wholly exempted, exempted goods. Next is nil rate, rated or zero rated. If in a question they give it as a nil rated or zero rated supply, we need to consider that. So, last but not the least, we have to exclude RCM inward supply value. So, whenever they give inward supply of goods under reverse charge mechanism, then we should not consider that while calculating aggregate turnover. So, let us see the format. So, this is a format of calculating aggregate turnover. So, it is a format with two columns that is particular and amount. So, here we have to consider taxable goods in bracket. I have given it as a excluding GST. If in case in question they mention that taxable supply of goods is this much including or inclusive of GST, then we have to exclude it. How we are going to exclude? So, we have to take that amount including GST into multiplied by 100 divided by 100 plus GST rate. If we do that, we will get the amount excluding GST. So, we have to consider interstate and inter intrastate supply of goods. If GST is included, then only we have to exclude it. So, we have to remember this point. If in case in a question, they will give including GST or inclusive of GST, then only we have to exclude it. Exempted goods also we have to take in. Non-taxable goods also we have to take in. Zero rated or nil rated and exported goods. Along with that, we have one more entry that is transferred to branch. So, whenever they give a transfer to branch, then we have to consider that amount also. So, if we in a, like total everything, we will get a total aggregate turnover. So, this is a format. So, below I have given item should not be considered or item should not be added. 
in your question some of the extra items will also be given which you need not to add in the why you need not to add while calculating aggregate turnover so mainly there are three things one is inward supply under reverse charge mechanism whenever in your question they'll give a inward supply of goods under reverse charge then we sh you should not consider that you have to write that sentence but in front of that instead of amount you have to write it as a not applicable and in note you have to mention that because it is an inward supply under a reverse charge mechanism we should not take it next agriculture cultivation by family members if they have given you have you should not consider it and taxes any of the tax paid igst sgst CGS, cgst or utgst tax paid on the or kotidrantu you should not take it it is not applicable so this is a format of aggregate turnover so let us see the sums in today's class i'll be uh, solving two sums so that you can uh, understand the basic things problem number one uh, this is a question paper of 2023 case study question. Mr. Kiran of Tamil Nadu has supplied you a following details. So date they have given, particulars they have given and amount they have given. So date will not consider while calculating aggregate turnover. But the question is you have to calculate aggregate turnover for the financial year 2022 and 23. So from 1st of April 2022, to 31st March 2023, items you have to take only that. If any items are given like out this bracket, you should not consider that. But in this question, all the items we have to consider because the date comes under the bracket of 22 and 23. First item, supply to Maharashtra. So it is considered as an interstate supply. So as per the format, we are considering interstate supply and in bracket they have not given including GST. So we will not do anything directly. We write it as a supply to Maharashtra and we will take the amount. So next one, supply to Coimbatore. So Coimbatore is one of the part of uh, India only and it is uh, uh, so Tamil Nadu is the state. So it is also considered. So this amount also we are going to take export to singapore so singapore is one of the country so we are exporting the goods to outside the india so it is exporting of a goods so this also we have to consider exempted supplies as per the format we have to consider exempted supplies also so last one is inward supply on which gst is payable on reverse charge mechanism so as per our format we should not take the item inward supply on which gst is payable on reverse charge so question is Mr. Kiran is not a registered under GST. Calculate aggregate turnover for financial year 2022 and 23. Comment whether he is liable for registration. So we need to comment whether he, need, he needs to get registered or no. So there are several rules to tell that whether the person is liable for registration or no. So in this sum we will going to study that. So in case study we will not get only a, a practical or a problem along with this you are this is question combined with the theory part also. One question alagade part A part B and telecoter one we need to solve aggregate turnover one more theory question will be that we need to solve that. So let us see the solution for this question. Let us see the solution. I have drafted a format of calculation of aggregate turnover. So computation of aggregate turnover of Mr. Kiran. So this is a two column format, particulars and amount. So take a reference of a question. So first one is supply to Maharashtra 28 lakh. So write it as it is in a particulars. Supply to Maharashtra and amount is 28 lakh. Next one. Supply to Coimbatore 4 lakh rupees. So as it is we need to take that supply to Coimbatore and the amount is 4 lakh. Next, export to Singapore. As I said, we have to take all the export. So, as it is, export to Singapore and amount is 32 lakh. Next one, exempted supply 18 lakh rupees. So, we have to consider that. So, in particulars, we need to write as it is, export uh, exempted supply and the amount is 18 lakh. So next is inward supply on which GST is payable on reverse charge 20 lakh. So as I said we should not consider this but we need to write it in a format. So we have to write it as it is inward supply on which GST is payable under reverse charge basis and amount column we have to write not applicable. So we are not uh, if we put a small dash is also okay. So we have to total it now. So that is called as total aggregate turnover if we add. 28 lakh plus 4 lakh plus 32 lakh and 18 lakh so it will be 82 lakh 
So this 82 lakh is aggregate turnover. Now we need to write the comment whether we need to the person need to register or no. For that we have a rules. So for this particular question you need to take it as a reference. According to GST law there is a rule that for particular states it is a uh, the aggregate turnover limit is different. So let us see this. So some of the northeast countries, so they are Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. So if it is a goods and if it is a service, for both the turnover limit is 10 lakh rupees. If a person from Manipur or Mizoram or Nagaland or Tripura, if his turnover, yearly turnover is more than 10 lakh rupees, then he need to register for GST. Next one. If a person is from Arunachal Pradesh or Meghalaya, Puducherry, Telangana, Uttarakhand or Sikkim. So you need to remember these states. If he is from any of these states, then the limit will be 20 lakh for both goods and services. So if the turnover is more than 20 lakh, then he need to register under GST. At last, email in a states and arbitrary. Apart from all these states, if any of the states in India, so aggregate turnover will be for goods 40 lakh rupees and for services 20 lakh rupees. So in our question, the Mr. Kiran is from Tamil Nadu. So he comes under third category. So that is all other Indian states and union territories. So here for goods, it is 40 lakh and for services, it is 20 lakh. But we can see in our question, they have not mentioned whether it is goods or service. So then we have to consider it as a general law bracket that is 20 lakh rupees. So if a turnover is more than 20 lakh rupees, then he need to get registered under GST. So the same you have to write it here. So this is the answer for a B question. Aggregate turnover of Mr. Kiran is more than general remit 20 lakh rupees. So that he is liable for registration. This you need to write. While writing a conclusion or a comment, we need to be very careful about one more thing. So there are list of persons who are liable for compulsory registration. So that is casual dealer, agent, non-resident, interstate supply uh, or e-commerce operator, person liable for TCS and input service distribution. So what is this list? If a aggregate turnover is more than 20 lakh rupees, then they need to get registered under GST. If in case it is less than 20 lakh rupees, no need to get registered. But if a person is casual dealer or an agent or an input service distributor or any of the seven, so if he is anyone, then he if his turnover is less than 20 lakh rupees also, they need to register under GST because they comes under the category that compulsory registration. So you need to remember this also. So I hope first sum is clear for you guys. So let us move to the second sum. Mr. X from Hubli provides the following information. Comment whether he is liable for registration. Can he opt for composition scheme? So here we got uh, one new word that is composition scheme. What do you mean by that? So there will be some small uh, business people. So for them 12% or 18% GST becomes a more burden. For that what this uh, government have done is if the turnover is less than 1.5 crore then they can opt for a composition scheme. They comes under a taxable bracket, they comes under a GST but they will not pay the tax 18%, 12% or 5%. The, there will be some specific uh, tax that is 1%, 2% or 5% they are going to pay that tax. So composition scheme, what we have to remember, if the turnover is more than 20 lakh rupees but less than 1.5 crore, then the person is liable for composition scheme. But there is one more rule. So when the uh, person is uh, into interstate transactions, so if he is involved in interstate transaction of goods or services, then if his turnover is less than 1.5 crore also, he cannot opt for composition scheme. He have to go with the normal scheme. So let us uh, discuss this while uh, writing the comment. See the question. Taxable supply of goods including 18% GST. So as I said the word including have come here. So we need to exclude it. So I will show you while solving how to exclude it. Interstate supply of goods 10 lakh rupees. Non-taxable we have to take. Exempted goods we have to take. Inward supply of goods under RCM. RCM is reverse charge mechanism which we should not consider. 
transfer to Bangalore branch. So while explaining the format, I have said so whenever it is a transfer of goods, then we uh, to the branch, then we have to consider that. IGST paid 20,000 rupees. So in format, I have also said the one of the items should not be considered is yes, GST or a tax paid. So any of the GST is paid, we should not consider it while calculating aggregate turnover. So let us uh, solve this sum. So as usual to solve this sum, I have taken a format. So that is particulars and amount. Computation of aggregate turnover of Mr. X. So first item we need to take it. So first item is Taxable supply of goods. So we can take a reference of a question. Taxable supply of goods including 18% GST for T2 lakh 48,000. So now I'll teach you how to exclude a GST when it is already included. So let us come back to the solution. So taxable supply of goods amount is 4 lakh 42 lakh 48,000 multiply. So exclude hang model that amount we have to take into 100 divided by 100 plus 18 percent so we have to take 100 plus gst here the rate of uh, gst is 18 percent so 100 plus 18 that is 118 42 lakh 48000 into 100 divided by 118 so it will amount to 36 lakh so once again i am explaining you the amount is 42 lakh 48000 but it is including 18 percent gst we have to exclude it so to exclude what we have to do 42 lakh 48000 multiplied by 100 divided by 118 so gst is 18 percent so 100 plus 18 118 Next item, interstate supply of goods. So, interstate supply of goods is 10 lakh rupees as it is we have to take. Next one, non-taxable goods. As I said, non-taxables is also a part of aggregate turnover. We have to take it. That amount is 5 lakh rupees. Next one, we have to take exempted goods also. Exempted goods is 15 lakh rupees as it is we have to take. Exempted goods, 15 lakh rupees. Next one. Inward supply of goods under reverse charge mechanism. As I said, we should not consider any of the inward supply of goods under reverse charge mechanism. But we need to write it. So, we need to write it in a format and in amount column, we have to write NA. That is not applicable. Next, transfer to Bangalore branch. So, branch transfer also we need to consider. Amount is uh, 4 lakh rupees. Transfer to uh, branch and 4 lakh rupees I have taken. Last one is IGST paid. So, any of the GST is paid, we should not consider, but we have to write it in a format. So, that is IGST paid and in amount column, we write it as a not applicable. So, we need to uh, like by adding all these, we will get a total aggregate turnover. So, 36 lakh plus 10 lakh, 5 lakh plus 15 lakh plus 4 lakh. So, it will amount to 70 lakh. So, what was the question? First question is whether he is liable for registration. So, they have they have not uh, they have not mentioned whether it is a casual law dealer or agent or something. So, we have to see the slab. So, the person is from which state they have not given. So, we will consider it is a general state which is applicable uh, goods 40 lakh rupees and uh, service 20 lakh rupees. We consider it as uh, any other states and uh, they have also men not mentioned whether it is a goods or service. So, we take a slab as a 20 lakh rupees. First comment is he comes under a bracket that is 20 lakh rupees. So, aggregate turnover of Mr. X is more than a general limit that is 20 lakh rupees. So, in our aggregate turnover is 70 lakh. It is more than 20 lakh. So, he is liable for registration. See the next question. Can he opt for composition scheme? So, composition scheme, Togo Bekantande rule say no. He, it should be less than 1.5 crore rupees. Rule number 1. So, 70 lakh rupees is less than 1.5 crore. So, we can firstly say that it is it comes under composition scheme. But there is a rule number 2. What is that? Whenever a person is involved in interstate supply, then he cannot opt for composition scheme. So, that you need to write in your uh, comment. So, since his turnover is less than 1.5 crore, there is an option to opt for composition scheme. But he cannot opt because his he is involved in interstate supply. So, interstate supply of goods is there in the question. So, interstate supply of goods, Martha Rodinda, he cannot opt for composition scheme. That should be your comment. So, in today's class, I have explained you how to calculate aggregate turnover here you need to 
remember three things number one so aggregate turnover we have to calculate we have to take all taxable supply all non-taxable supply exempted supply export transfer transfer to branches we should not consider inward supply under reverse charge mechanism second point we need to remember is there is a state wise slabs for general states the slab is 20 lakh rupees for services and 40 lakh rupees for goods so when they don't mention you whether it is service or goods then you have to take a limit of 20 lakh rupees so if our turnover is more than 20 lakh rupees then he need he is liable for registration point number three when the turnover is less than 1.5 crore so more than 20 lakh but less than 1.5 crore then he is liable for composition scheme but if he is involved in interstate supply of goods then he cannot opt for composition scheme so the, these three points you have to remember for writing comments so i hope you have learned the today's concept very nicely if you have any doubts you can put it in the comment box so if you are not yet subscribed my channel please subscribe so that you will get a notification whenever i upload my new video thank you for watching my video in next video i'll come with a new concept new subject till then Take care and keep watching my videos. Thank you.